Hi, I'm Caroline Hambright and this is Brighter Days. Hit subscribe if you want to see more eclectic DIY projects. Today I'm going to talk about something I actually know a lot about, screen printing. Why would you screen print? Why does anyone screen print? Why do I screen print? It's really useful. You can make shirts, patches, you can even just print right on paper to make cards or flyers or posters or whatever you want. Now before we get started, there's a couple of things I need to tell you about. First, I mostly print in monochrome, one color. I am gonna attempt to do two colors at the end. We'll see how it goes because I don't have the equipment to do it. And also, most of this video is gonna be spent telling you about different ways you can get your image onto your screen. Most of screen printing is set up. So the actual printing only is like 10% of your time at the end. Yeah, it's the most fun part and the part we wanna to get to right away, but we have to spend a lot of time setting up to make sure those prints are gonna come out right. This is a screen. It's basically just a big stencil. Most of the stuff you see me using today you can buy at the art store, but I am going to be doing a method of complete DIY screen printing with no equipment bought at all. Just stuff I find around the house. But first, let me show you how screen printing works. So the screen is a very fine mesh stretched across a frame. You find some way to block out parts of it, that's your image. Then you get some ink on there, spread it across with a squeegee, and what's left is a print of the thing that you left a stencil of. So, there's three different ways I have defined for you to get your image on the screen. The first way is just with a stencil. I just use a piece of plastic and cut it out. This is a lot of fun if you're just starting out because it's so cheap. The problem is you're limited to shapes that you can cut out and it'll only get you about 10 prints before the ink sort of seeps through and spills. You can kind of see like where that was happening on the back here. And once that happens, you kind of have to clean it up and then start over. Some people like to use contact paper and stick it to the back side of the screen. But the problem with that is you only get that one set of prints. Once you're done, you have to throw that contact paper away. You can't use it a second time. Another way to print very DIY is the speedball drawing fluid and screen filler method. It's great if you love to draw by hand. You use the drawing fluid to draw a picture right onto your screen. I used to put mine in a little squeezy bottle so I could get really nice thin lines. You then let that dry, then you coat it with the screen filler. Screen filler pretty much dries in your screen forever and then you wash out the blue stuff. It's water soluble. The only real limitation here is you're limited to what you can draw by hand. So for instance, for me, if I had to draw a straight line, I'd have a pretty bad time. Here's one example of a shirt I made using that method. I drew my design on paper, traced it onto the screen with a pencil, and then filled in the screen filler. All right, the last method, the one that I only use nowadays, because you have no limitation in your design, the photo emulsion method. The first thing you need is your image. It has to be printed on clear transparency plastic sheets. You can print these from your printer at home, although I do recommend doing two and doubling them. So this is actually, you can see the tape here. This is two that I've just aligned the image. It needs to be 100% black so no light can shine through, and that's because of the way photo emulsion works. Start with a clean, dry screen and coat it with a layer of photo emulsion. A nice, even, perfect coat. And then put it away in your darkroom to dry. Once it is dry, you take it and put it on a dark surface, and on top of it you put your image, which is on a transparency. Then put a piece of glass on top so it stays nice and flat. Then you turn a nice, bright light on for some certain amount of time. Then it bakes the parts that could see the light, but not the parts that could not see the light, so that's your image. So then you run, run, run to the hose and wash the part out that did not bake because it's still water soluble. I realize that this demonstration does not show you how insanely stressful this process is, so watch me do it in action. That thing I'm pouring into is called a scoop coater. It makes putting your coat on a lot easier, but you can use a squeegee. Did I say dark room? This box works great. And voila. 
Now I have to time it for I don't know how long. There's a handy chart that comes with the bottle of photo emulsion. Okay, so I need my phone to do that. Bye! When it's done baking, the emulsion should look darker, but you should still kind of be able to see your image. I can't see it at all, but let's go anyway. Oh, it's, I can see it now. With some cold water pressure and a little soft scrub brushing, your image should be able to wash out of the screen. This is a great method. I think the best, but there's a lot of room for error. If you get anything wrong in that process, your image might not come out right. So you can see the image did all come out and it was looking good, but um, you can see in here, some of the stuff we didn't want to come out did come out. That is a result of not baking it long enough. If the area that fell out is really, really bad around the edges, I have to start over. But usually I just put it on my light table and paint on a little bit more emulsion where I need to. All right, we got the image on the screen. Now it's time to print. First things first is to tape up the edges of the screen. I always use clear packing tape. I make sure the side facing the image is totally flat against the screen, put it down with my fingers, and then crease it into the screen itself. And I turn it and I do it again. And then I'll get in those corners to make sure there is no ink that is going to escape anywhere. I've found two different kinds of squeegees. This kind, which is this like rubbery and rounded one, I find this works better for like thicker inks, like white inks. And then there's this kind, kind of has a better grip on it. I think a little easier to use just like, you know, ergonomically, but it has a sharp edge. I think it's better for thinner inks like black. The next thing you're gonna need is a press. You can, of course, grab a friend to actually press the screen down and hold it in place for you. Ugh. Many years ago, I built this. I cut each piece out from one long piece. I think I used oak. It has to be super heavy to work right. It's built so that you can put a t-shirt on it. So this is the palette here and you put the t-shirt and there's room for it to go under so it can like hang out. And then there's this gap here so that the rest of the t-shirt can bundle in there. Then you have these, they're the jiffy clamps. These little buggers, you put your screen in and then you screw them shut and they kind of bite down onto the wood so it really does not move at all. All right, let's flip and do this already. I wear gloves, you don't have to, whatever. Oh, but I forgot to tell you one thing. For fabric or paper, you have to stick what you're printing on to your surface. This is a little easy tack, but you could just as easily use some spray mount from the art store or even a glue stick. The kind of ink I used for the patches is the water-based screen printing fabric ink. You start by putting a nice thick bead of it at the top of your image. What I'm using to do that is just a little piece of cardboard. Generally, before I start printing, I'll cut up like a cereal box or something into little one by three inch cards. They come in really handy for moving ink around. The first thing we do is we flood our image. We pull very lightly and evenly across without pushing the ink through the mesh of the fabric. That little back and forth move is to get ink to get unstuck off of the squeegee. Now, apply even pressure and pull all the way through. Don't be timid. Huzzah! But don't dilly-dally. Now it's time to get that ink off of there and move the squeegee over to the other side and push that bead of ink to back flood. But don't do that hard. Again, this is just to coat the top and then we come back over and we'll print again. One very important thing to mention about the water-based ink is you need to work quickly because what happens is, is it starts to dry up in the little mesh of your screen. That might never come out and you'll ruin your screen and it'll mess up your image. Another thing to remember about water-based inks is they do have to be heat set so that they will not wash out in the washing machine. So all you do is let them air dry and then throw them in the clothes dryer on high. For the t-shirts, I did something different. This might look like the same can of ink, but it's not. It's called Plastisol. It has a slightly different consistency, almost like the tar from The Land Before Time. But it works the same way. You lightly flood the screen first, and then pull it through for your print. You notice I'm starting here on a scrap patch. That's because sometimes the first print doesn't really come out that great, and I don't want to waste a t-shirt. Now it does take a lot of practice to be able to line that t-shirt up just right so that the print comes out straight, 
The rule is you kind of want to have the print start at about four fingers from the top of the collar. Take that extra second to get it set up just right because you really only have one shot and you don't want to mess up a t-shirt. I like to have a set of hangers specially designated for shirt drying. Now of course, this Plastisol ink won't exactly dry because it's an oil-based ink, but you need to have somewhere to put them while you're working. We're not done yet. Plastisol ink has to be cured at actually a pretty high temperature, over 300 degrees. Now, you can't do this by just throwing it in the clothes dryer, so I used a heat gun and a little temperature gauge to sense the temperature. This took a really long time, and professionals have something called flash dryer that does it automatically. You want one? Follow me on Instagram! So that's all fun and good, but what happens when you want more than one color? You can get a multicolored press. I honestly don't want to take up that much space in my garage. It's really hard to get your two colors aligned, but I have done it DIY in the past, and I'm gonna try it DIY now. Here goes nothing. First, I had to make an entirely new screen. For my colors, I decided to have some fun and do what's called a split fountain. When you're doing that, you kind of want to jiggle them together so that they blend. And then, just proceed as normal. You have to dry your ink right away because you can't print wet ink on top of wet ink. How did I line this up, you ask? I guessed. And actually, I did this totally wrong. You need to leave your fabric on the palette and then switch your screen immediately. Because otherwise, you'll never be able to line it up right again. Case in point, when I made this special shirt for a special fan. All right, I'm very nervous, Deja, but here we go. We're gonna try it anyway. All right, one, two, three. As you can see, the two images are not lined up. I think she'll like it anyway. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you how to do some screen printing without buying anything at all. So I'm gonna only use stuff I find around the house. Let's see how it turns out. All right, this is a super old school method for getting your image on the screen. You trace it, and then you trace it again in glue. So this is gonna mean that that image is gonna be the negative part of the image. So I'm actually gonna end up with an opposite print. I actually use old pants to make patches all the time. Sometimes I just find the biggest pair at the thrift store. Got my screen all taped up and adding extra up to where I want the ink to go. Cool, so instead of a press, I'll use a piece of Gorilla Tape. This is actually a pretty crucial step if you're printing without a press. There needs to be a few millimeters of gap in between the screen and the surface and a little area for the fabric to go, so just tape down some pieces of cardboard. Now I need a squeegee. I think this flat piece of cardboard should do. I think it's gonna get soaked with ink pretty quickly though, so I cut myself a few extras. There has to be a way for the fabric to stick to the surface or else you're going to have a huge mess. Instead of ink, I'll use regular, crappy acrylic paint. Here goes nothing. Ah, uh, it's like getting stuck on the gluey, bumpy bits. Ugh. Oh my god, that was awkward. Hey! Let's see how many we can do. Well, you can see the picture, but they really do look like crap. 
All right, so those didn't turn out exactly how I wanted to. I think it could have actually been a lot better if I had used more sheer thin nylon, um, what do you call them? Stockings, rather than those thick sort of wintry stockings. The holes were way too big and the mesh was like thick and weird. So these are maybe like 20 bucks. And the squeegees, maybe another 20 bucks. Plus maybe some ink, and you're looking at like 50 bucks to get you started. So if you do wanna get started with screen printing and have a lot better results, I would say buy the materials. But also, do remember that the first few times you try it, there is a learning curve. I've been doing this for about 15 years, and even still, I get messed up shirts and blown out designs and what have you. It's just all about practice, practice, practice like anything else. If you want a shirt, available while supplies last. In the meantime, happy printing.